The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be back with you again. In our first reading from Exodus, the Israelites had been wandering the desert for some time now and they are preparing to enter into a sacred covenant with God at Mount Sinai, with Moses as the intermediary between the people, of, the people of Israel and God. By establishing this covenant with Israel, God enters into a unique relationship with his chosen people. They are to be a holy nation, which means that they are set apart from the world. But also, as a priestly kingdom, Israel is called to make God known to the whole world through their relationship with him. In our second reading from the letter to the Romans, Paul explains the magnitude of Christ's self-offering. And he does this by drawing from the social norms of the day, the um, honor-shame system. In the first century, this system of expectations had an enormous influence on people's behavior and social customs. Honor was very important to them and very fragile as well. People were careful to um, act in a way that would maintain or even add to their social status, and they would shun actions that reduced their standing in the eyes of other people. Kind of sounds familiar when we look at how people are honored or shamed on our social media, that brutal world of social media. It was even considered acceptable to offer your life for someone else, as long as that person was of the same or greater social standing. But you would not want to die in place of a person of lower standing, because then in your death, you would be dishonored and shamed. Paul knew this attitude all too well when he uh, described Jesus as offering his life for others, for people who were burdened with sin and brokenness. And so he took them on their shame while at the same time elevating them and us to new life. If we want to follow the example of Jesus, we are to honor those whom we serve. We must live among them, if you will, as Jesus did when he took on human flesh. 
We must remember that ministry is not a question of serving people from on high, while the, those we serve remain below us in lesser honor and stature. But rather, it's important for those we serve, and I think even more important for us who serve, to be on the same level, to sit with, to be with them, to hear their stories and to let those stories affect us to learn from their lived wisdom and experience, to listen to the challenges they face and realizing that many times there's really nothing we can do for them, but listen and pray with and for them. We can bring so much healing to others by that simple act of sacred listening. Our gospel from Matthew tells us today when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He is so moved by the plight of the people that he sends out his 12 disciples to, and empowers them to bring his healing presence to the sick and the suffering around them. Pope Francis explains that the more we serve, the more we are aware of God's presence, especially when we serve those who cannot give anything in return, the poor. We recall the words of Jesus today, you received without payment, then go and give without payment. Through our baptism, we are anointed to be priests, prophets, and kings priestly in our lives of prayer and service, prophets by announcing the word of God, and kings by leading with integrity and with mercy. Jesus pleads with us to go and proclaim the good news to the kingdom. Go and cure the sick. Go and touch other people. Heal. Go and make peace. Go and make visible his love and compassion to others. We are to put aside our honor, our status, our pride, our security, and our fears. And we are to trust in him, the one whose faithfulness to us is limitless. Who are the harassed and the helpless around us? Who are those ones who are cast aside by society? Who are the ones that are alone and forgotten? Who are the ones that we are afraid to help? They are all around us, and it is not enough to just look at them with pity and beat our breasts. We must encounter them with the love of Christ. And we don't have to go out and minister to the world by ourselves. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can partner with others right here in our parish, in our family of parishes. We need volunteers in our St. Vincent de Paul Society, our bereavement and grief support ministries, our outreach to the homeless, the Knights of Columbus, the Catholic Women's League, readers at Mass, as well as many other in, um, in ministries that we support. And we can also partner with other organizations in our community like Windsor Right to Life and 40 Days for Life that needs people to be visible, praying for the unborn and the elderly. It's up to us to decide to inhabit a certain place, if you will, in this world, a place where others can connect with God through the words we speak and more importantly, through our example of Christian comfort. We must choose to take responsibility for making God present in our world today. Who else is gonna do this but us? We must live so that others will witness the incredible love and care that God has for, for them, but for us, for all of us. Soon after World War II ended, 
a group of German students decided to go and help some people, to go and help those who had lost so much. And so imagine this, they volunteered to go to London, England to help rebuild an English cathedral that had been damaged by German bombs. As work progressed, they became concerned about this very large statue of Jesus, whose hands had been destroyed by one of the, uh, one of the bombing raids. And the volunteers, they tried their best to restore these hands, but um, it just could not be done. And so finally, they decided to let the hands of Jesus remain missing from the statue. And they installed a written inscription below that read, Christ has no hands but ours. A prayer that I often recite goes something like this. Lord, help me to empty myself so that you can fill me with your presence, your vision, your love, and your compassion. In this way, we will be more than able to go out and be the hands and feet of Christ in our world.